This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. I'm Marley Oxenholm, and I'm here at the Riskier North America headquarters today, and I'm sitting down with Jasper van Valdenberg, who is CTO of Riskier North America. Thank you so much for being with me today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, Marley. So now tell me about what Riskier does. So Riskier is a security test lab. So we do various things. Um, we do testing itself of products. We do training, and we also sell tools to uh, for people to actually test uh, their products themselves. That I'm a security analyst here, so I'm a, I'm the newest addition to the company. So my pure task is just to do be an analyst. I'm a senior security analyst, so that means I've got a little bit of experience in that analyst role. Uh, that's my core. That's what it says my job is on paper. What that seniority brings in is kind of leveraging your experience in terms of being a technical lead for teams. Um, as well as helping uh, basically do project management to make sure everything stays on time, budget, and all of our customers are happy with what they're getting. And in addition to that, I also work on kind of the IT infrastructure and the physical security and management of some of our internal projects. Well, the short answer is that I'm kind of the office dad. Uh, that's at least that's what's on my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> um, I handle all of the uh, recruitment, uh, payroll, benefits, um, uh, really all that kind of stuff and then company outings um, if we ever need to order things for the lab or for my uh, my associates here I try to make sure that they can do their job and also in a in kind of a fun way so sometimes I'll bust out the guitar nice. I haven't brought the banjo yet oh. I'm threatening to bring the banjo it'll happen and so now tell me about all the different ways you test products yeah there's a, a few different ways so um, it depends a bit on what the question is that we get from customers so if it's a certification question uh, which basically means we have to check whether a device falls within a certain uh, threat model, mm -hmm. uh, we test against that. So if it's a more free-form evaluation question, it, um, it can be everything from, you know, try to hack this thing to a very specific question that we get. Then another thing it depends on is, is this a software product or a hardware product? So when we look at software, we obviously get source code, we start analyzing that source code. If it's a hardware product, uh, we take it into our lab and we start attaching all our cool mm -hmm. oscilloscopes, probes, etc., to it and see what we, uh, what we can get to. Nice, okay. And now, what are some of the most common vulnerabilities you've seen in products that you've tested before? Yeah, that's, that also really depends on what we're looking at. So, um, from our perspective, what you see in, for instance, in mobile payment applications, you know, um, you know how you can go up to a uh, payment terminal nowadays mm -hmm. and tap with your mobile phone to yep. pay? Um, well, in those kind of products, really what we're looking for is are the payment keys properly protected? So can we get to them? So we see some issues around that sometimes. If you look at more the embedded device world, IoT world, we're still in the phase where we see a lot of kind of traditional uh, buffer overflow type attacks, okay. uh, stack smashing, uh, things like that, that, that need to be uh, addressed really. On a typical day, I come in, I check to see what's going on with our Netherlands office. Um, I plan out my time. I also check to see if we have customer meetings, if we have internal meetings, so that I can sort of work in between them. And most of my time is either spent in the lab doing technical work or you know, at my terminal doing internal projects, organization. Usually I, I come in, check my emails, uh, I try to stay in com constant communication with the Netherlands office. I do a little bit of accounting as well, so um, so it kind of depends. The administrative stuff keeps me busy, but um, yeah, the overall state of the office and, and what, we're, what we're doing here just is always so different, whether it's between uh, yeah, hosting a client visit or uh, getting lunch for people or trying to improve the acoustics in our conference room. It just kind of is always something new every day. <laughs> in the morning, you come in, check your emails and check if you have any meetings with the, the team internally or externally and do other stuff because sometimes, depending on the project deadlines, you work on multiple projects at a time. So as you mentioned, you have the 
uh, Netherlands location as well. What's the benefit to being here in the Silicon Valley? Oh, I would think the clients. I mean, our, our, when you talk about hardware security and also um, technical professionals in the area, Silicon Valley, I mean, that's just, that's just what it is. Particularly with hardware, I think the top five companies, I don't remember that presentation that we looked at, but the top five companies uh, that are grossing, tech companies that are grossing the most money, all of them in the last 10 years have been investing heavily in the IoT. So this is just, the, and they're all around here or on the West Coast in general. So um, so it's, it's of enormous benefit to, to be here, but also to be bolstered by the experience and the expertise that comes from the Netherlands company. Lots of things. So first of all, some clients we literally walk to, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is great. Um, but also going back to the creative atmosphere, I, this area is just buzzing, right? I, don't, the, I remember the first time I landed here, um, and just driving around the area, it's, it's you just see all your the popular names of your clients just around around you. Um, things are happening. When I walked into a Starbucks, I hear people talking about different DRAM technologies there. I'm like, where? Where did I land? It's surreal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm, you know, I, I my background is all about computers, so that I like surreal in a good way for me. Yeah. The benefits for being here, it's definitely the Silicon Valley spirit of innovation. There's so much going on. Um, just all of these places to meet with other hackers who kind of want to take on their own projects and and make things. Um, in addition to that, we have pretty good public transport, um, and we also have amazing geography. So within about like half an hour, an hour drive, you could be in snow, you could be in desert, you could be in rainforest. Like it's it's amazing. And so, how do you decide what to test? Do the companies come to you? Yeah, so um, companies come to us, <laughs> yes, uh, and they really want to know uh, how's my product doing and or can I get a certificate for this. Um, yeah, in the, um, in the certification case, it's usually pretty well defined by the certification schemes what you need to look at. So for instance, if you're looking at a mobile payment application, um, yeah, they want to check, uh, do a source code review of all the software. You want to make sure that things like um, uh, anti-root detection, uh, anti-emulation, those kind of things are all uh, covered. Keys are well protected. Um, yeah, when you look at uh, more free-form evaluations, we really get um, different questions depending on, um, let's say, how much experience the customer already has with security. Sometimes we're working with a security team on their side and they're just like, okay, we want to have this very specific question answered. Like, what's the side channel resistance of this particular crypto engine? Because we don't have the expertise there, but can you please figure out? Or sometimes it's like, um, my product needs to be secure, help. Mm. Yeah, and then you got to help them with threat modeling and figure out, okay, so what, when this goes into the field, what's going to be the threats out there? And then figure out what attacks you want to test for. Okay. So, yeah, various, various different uh, uh, clients and different approaches. Okay. And so now, based off your years of experience, how would you say that the threat landscape has changed over the past decade or so? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually a really interesting question. So you see, obviously, that uh, a lot more things, we just used to call them embedded systems, but now they're called things. Um, <laughs> Internet of things. Thi yeah. So they're getting connected. And um, that really changes mostly the scalability of attacks. Uh, so in the in embedded world, obviously there were, there's always security problems everywhere, right? It's just a matter of how bad are they and are they exploitable. If a device is not connected, it can still be broken, right? You just have to walk up to it and do True. some yeah. things with it. Now you can access that stuff through the internet. So that's really what, what the major uh, change is here. Okay, and I saw that you guys had a lot of cool stuff around here, and I was wondering if the creative atmosphere helps with a better workflow. Definitely, yes. The first thing I like here is it's more informal, so if you need help or if you want to talk with your colleagues, you can just straight away and go and ask. So that really helps, because I'm the new one, newest edition, so there are a lot of things you could learn from other people because there are more experienced people here. 
so it's a better enrollment in that sense. Yeah, with these with these types of people, I mean, with hackers, I mean, you, you know, they can't sit still. You, you can't give them just a task and expect them to just do it. Uh, so, you know, we, we try to play around. We have quarterly company outings. Um, nice. So we'll go go-karting or we went, uh, I think we have gone, I wasn't here, but I think we've gone bowling before. Um, uh, yeah, I, I always try to find something creative. Oh, did like an escape room last nice, year. Nice. Uh, that's my millennial brain came up with that idea. So, <laughs> um, so that was pretty fun. So yeah, that, keeping that levity and keeping that uh, uh, creative atmosphere is, is really crucial to, to keep these guys engaged. And so why should companies choose Riskier? Um, so I think we are um, really good at that out of the box thinking for them. And um, specifically also when you look at uh, certification we really try to help people to uh, to get to the point with security where they need to be uh, so with certification that means you want to get your product up to a level where it can be certified uh, when you're talking about free form evaluation you know we really want to help these people to get better security that's really what drives us as a uh, as a company and what's your favorite part about working at riskier your it's the enrollment because people are very friendly. You could learn a lot of stuff from them. They're more experienced and you could do a lot of fun, interesting things here. This is something that I think about a lot. Like it keeps coming up. Um, I'd have to say the draw, like above any other company, is the challenges. So we work for some of the big companies. We work for some of the small companies. Every couple of weeks we have a new target. And the question can be different. Like. Sometimes it's breaking a crypto key, taking it out of hardware. Sometimes you have to make new tools. So it's, it's like having creative problems to solve. Uh, fresh ones, several going on at once every couple of weeks. So that's stimulating. Uh, the second uh, favorite thing I have is my colleagues, actually. So it's a lot like a big family. <laughs> uh, they're also very creative, very smart. Um, we learn a lot from each other, we share knowledge, it's one of our top values. So. Well, for me, uh, personally, I just really feel at home here. Like, I like playing with technology, um, I like being myself, you know, this is my suit. Um, yeah, that really helps, um, helps me enjoy this and just the creative atmosphere. Yeah. I feel cared about by the, by the people who manage me. Um, if uh, so just as a personal example, this year, actually, uh, my wife has been very sick. Um, she had to skip out on seven months of work. Um, she had seven different surgeries, countless trips to the emergency room, and risk here was really there for me the entire way. Um, if I had to work remotely or if I had to leave early to take her to doctor's appointments or anything like that, um, they, they were like, just do what you've got to do. Uh, so I, I really felt taken care of. Um, and I felt taken care of before that, but this year has been just such a trying year that that lesson, uh, or rather that value has really been eye-opening for me. So I, I really uh, look forward to working for Risky for many years to come. Wonderful, thank you so much for being with me today, Evan, I appreciate it. Thank you, appreciate you. <laughs> Awkward handshake. <laughs> This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online.